Welcome. Thank you for joining me, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist here. Uh, thank you for joining because I know sometimes uh, watching something or taking the time to do something can be time consuming. But I'd like to thank you for joining me because today we're talking about being fully prepared, which is another way of saying how things don't consume your time. So I would love to know where you are in the world, if you are here, here live, if you're not here live, and sorry, where you are in the world. That's super inspiring to see. Now, Are You Fully Prepared came about from what's happening in the world right now. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world, but I'm finding with my clients and those even just complete strange people, strange people I talk to, strangers I talk to, there's a lot of uncertainty within us making decisions. Are they the right decisions for us? Are they the right decisions for others? And there's a little bit of turmoil going on, not just with us, but of course around the world. So when I came up with this topic, thanks to my daughter, I looked up the dictionary meaning and the, there's two meanings to prepare, the word pre pre prepare. As one is make something ready for use or consideration. Make something, something ready for use or consideration. The other is make someone, someone, not something ready or able to do or deal with something. So there's definitely uh, two things, there's something and someone. So this video is for everything. It's for business, it's for personal, it's for the world dynamics that are going on around us. And I just would like to share how you can be fully prepared for anything. Now I'm not going, this is doomsday, and I'm not saying anything like that, but I'm just letting you know, are you fully prepared for whatever comes to you? We, I was uh, blessed to be part of the earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand uh, over 10 years ago, and my daughter and I were part of that. Now, prior to the big earthquake in February, there was another one earlier, and the earlier one was to me our warning, our wake up and see what's around and what's important to you. So being part of that earthquake, it really taught me to be prepared, not just in my business world, but in my home and in my health and in my finances and in my relationships. So it's not just in my uh, business world where I expected preparation. So the universe gave us a warning. I didn't necessarily listen to it. Uh, the next earthquake came and I got a hurl of a lesson, as most people did when the second earthquake came. So you either hear the lessons and see the lessons and do something about it, or you go, oh, I don't see that, and you ignore, and the next one comes bigger. So we also the other night here at home had a power cut, and that showed me there was some levels of preparation we had in the house and some we didn't. Now, when the power cut happened around New Zealand, there was quite a few uh, cities that had it. We uh, have a fire, so that was perfect. That was perfect that we had the fire and we had heating. But it was like, oh my gosh, where's the lighter for the candle? Because we had a fire, we knew where that was and we had a spare one in the house. But they're just the little things that you've got to be aware of. So I'm not here to panic you on anything. I just really would like to emphasize that. I'm not here to panic you on anything, but I'm just going to say, are you fully prepared for anything? It's like when you want a band-aid, you cut yourself, you want a band-aid for your finger, and you go there and there is an empty packet. Do you know how frustrating that is? So, just ensure that you're fully prepared for anything and everything. So, in your business world, in your business world, which is also can be in your personal world as well, Write your priorities, and when I say your priorities, what you'd like to get done, but list them as priorities, don't list them as jobs or tasks, because 
if you list them as jobs or tasks, your mindset's going to go, oh, I've got to do this job, or oh, I've got to do this task, or whatever. So if you list them as a priority, there's a different shift in your head already about what's on your piece of paper. So do that daily. I encourage you to do that daily. Once you've got that list of priorities, you put a time frame down. When, when, when am I looking to have this done by? Put a time. And make sure this stuff is realistic. Don't do fantasy, BS, whatever. Put realistic. Put a realistic time frame, not go, okay, uh, by 24 hours I want to lose 5 kgs. Or, like, come on. Well, yes, you could probably do that, but you'd probably have to cut off an arm. Actually, I don't even know if an arm would weigh 5 kgs. So be careful what you ask for. But put a realistic time frame down. Do you need help? Do you need help with this priority list? What else do you need? Do you need supplies? Do you need people when I talk about that help? What else do you need in there? And then you either ask for help or you get on and get it done. So you either ask for help or get on and get it done once you've done that priority and broken it down. Please don't be fearful of asking questions because if you're worried about what other people think about you, that priority list is not going to get done. It's not going to be done to a standard where you're going to feel fulfilled. It's going to become a frustrated, going around, chaotic level. So, priorities. Yes, list your priorities, Jay. Yes, in fact, I think you've got a list of priorities. <laughs> anyway, so, don't be fearful of asking those questions. When you cross, when you've done it, actioned it, cross it off your list. Use a, a pen, pen, pencil, whatever. Cross it off your list. I write it down. I write it down. Cross it off your list because there's something satisfying about seeing that crossed out priority. If you have it on your notes on your phone, put a line through it. Then at the end of the day, you can cross it. You can erase it. But don't erase it straight away because at the end of the day, if you're beating yourself up and you go, what did I do today? What was that freaking thing I did today? You can go, oh my gosh, there, there's four things I've crossed out. And it could be something small like cleanse your face, wash your hair, um, talk to a friend, any of that stuff. Well, it's not small, they're important. But any of those things, cross it off because you still achieve something. So when we look at the bigger picture of this this fully prepared. Here's some things I'd love you to look at. And there is no right or wrong answer in this, but I'd love you to look at this. So grab your pen and paper and ask yourself, is your will updated? Is your will updated? Have I made that one clear? Uh, funeral. I was watching a TV program the other night, Shortland Street, and they talked about a funeral and the son, the person who passed away, yes, I know it was acting and I know that, but it's actually reality. Uh, he wanted a specific funeral. He hadn't planned and put that in his specifications. His parents wanted something completely different, so he was going to have a completely different funeral because he didn't prepare for that. Now, I personally haven't prepared for my funeral. I have some ideas on what I'd like but who knows when it's going to happen, and down the track, or sooner rather than later. So that's one of my things. But prepare for that. Nobody else wants to be doing it your way, do they? When the earthquake happened in Christchurch, we had uh, we couldn't get into our house. And the reason we couldn't get into our house is because the power was out. And when the power was out, the garage door didn't open, and we had no key. So we had to wait till we could find a key to get into our home. So these are just the little things. So do you have a key outside your house or your pin pad if you've got a number on the entrance way? Can you get in there if there's a power cut? These are the things you just got to be aware of. Is there petrol in your car? Do you have enough petrol if you had to go to the next town or you had to do something? Do you have enough petrol? When we think about that, um, also from the Christchurch earthquake, I learned some things is unplug your appliances that you don't use. So we have an air fryer here at home and one of the things that I do is I don't leave it plugged in in the wall because if there's a power surge or anything, it's just one of my things that I now am onto. Now you know, to, I definitely unplug your TV, all those things, I don't. Um, but it's those little things that I unplug, unless you have a surge um, thingy in your PowerPoint, I point at my PowerPoint down there, any of that stuff, because it's just an extra 
chaotic uh, thing you're going to have to deal with. So, thinking about the air fryer. Do you, one of the things I ensure I do is I clean my kitchen and put all my dishes away before I go to bed at night. And that's because of the earthquake. Because what happened is I put all the dishes in the sink. We had the earthquake. All the glass then went down the drain. We then had to get a plumber. We had to do this, this, and this to get all that done. I also put the, I don't know why I point behind me. Um, I also put the frying pan or the roasting dish that had water in it on top of the gas hob. Left it, I thought I'll leave it soak overnight. What happened? The earthquake happened. That soaked into the gas. New story, new new uh, stove top, blah, 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 blah. So these are just a little thing. If you just spend a few minutes doing certain things, if something happened, the chaos at the end is ne not necessarily going to um, blow. One of the other things I'll tell you on the lessons from the earthquake is if you sleep in the nudie. If you sleep in the nudie and you have to get up, do you have your pajamas or whatever handy under your pillow or near you in case you have to bolt? You heard that right. Yes, be prepared for that. In fact, I wrote that in an article in the magazine, one of the aeroplane magazines, another story. So, groceries. What about the groceries? Have you got your groceries sorted? in the house. Now, I'm not talking about stockpiling, toilet paper, all that sort of stuff, um, but have you got the extra stuff in your house if something happened that you couldn't leave your house for four days or three days or something? This is all just being prepared. This is on. Oh, you may just go, oh my god, my eyes are glazing over already. I know. How do you think I felt when I was thinking about all this stuff? So, think about that. Being prepared groceries. Now, I have a problem with potato chips. Uh, and dip in my house and when I say problem if they're in the house they're calling me so just because you've stocked things in your house does not necessarily Deborah I'm talking to you does not necessarily mean you're going to eat it all in one sitting so be aware of that um, and the other one is your loved ones do you have your loved ones details and when I talk about that you know um, not just on the phone, because I know for me, a lot of people say to me, oh, what's your partner's phone number, or what's this, and I'm like, I don't know, or what's your next of kin's phone number, and I'm like, I don't know, I have to go to my phone, so if I run out of battery on my phone, I'm poked, it's true, so think of those things, do you have them in a place that's stored, that's necessary, if somebody needs to get hold of them, Benjamin Franklin once said, don't put off don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. And I absolutely love that. But I am going to say, unless it's to the detriment of your health and well-being. So if you are absolutely broken mentally, physically, or whatever, and you have no more energy to do something, and you know you've got to fold the washing or the sheets or anything, for God's sake, just leave it. Don't beat yourself up that you don't get that done. Tomorrow is another day. We don't know what's going to happen overnight, but, okay? So don't beat yourself up. So I love Benjamin Franklin's quote, but don't do it to the detriment of your health and well-being. When we talk about being fully prepared, uh, I also want to know about medical conditions. If you have something that's come up, deal with it. Don't wait until later down the track. We hear so many things... Um, that people go, oh, I just didn't realize it was anything, so I just left it. I know for my daughter, my daughter had a broken arm, and I left her arm. I said, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Oh, she was in an arm or part of her leg? I think it was an arm. Whoops, sorry, Sophie, about that. Uh, and it wasn't until we went to the doctor about seven or eight weeks, uh, seven or eight days later, we found out she had broken bones in there. So, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I have laughed. That's clearly one of the things. So, if you think there's an issue, go deal with it. Don't let it fester, get worse, or whatever. And I'm saying go see an expert. Not a random, but actually go see an expert. Listen to your body. If it says stop, then stop. Take time out if that's what you need. You've got to do what's best for you. And be grateful. And tell those around you you're grateful. Tell those people around you how grateful you are to be here, alive, listening to this this uh, video, appreciating what you have around you, 
right now there's people attending funerals there's people wondering what if so share that love with those share your gratitude for being alive and what they've done to you in this world what do you desire and what are you going to do about it don't be the person who says I wish I knew earlier I wish I knew earlier appreciate what you have in your life right now and if you have any chaos that's going on or don't know how to keep moving forward or anything there is somebody you can talk to and she's right here in front of you please reach out don't let this get to you whatever this is thank you for joining me that is me over and out see it wasn't as painstaking as uh we thought it was going to be so are you fully prepared are you fully prepared for whatever whatever comes your way thank you for joining me that is debs cooper over and out i am signing off now um but if you're watching this i am going to jump on over to instagram because i've got this super 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 inspiring lady who's going to interview me so if you want to know what's happening on instagram i will um uh, i'll put the link in here thank you for joining me i might see you on instagram in 13 minutes um or i might not but thank you gratitude sending you much love thank you